Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and we continue with our topic of discussion and this is genetics. This is a topic in form for biology. At this point, uh, we are going to discuss uh, the chromosome. As we understand that uh, the chromosome is the one that contains uh, the genes and the genes are the ones that uh, determine the characteristics of the cell and its progeny or its offspring. So the chromosome. Uh, before we get into a lot of details about the chromosome, it's important to know where it is located. And we know that the chromosomes are located within the nucleus of a cell. Within the nucleus of a cell, that's where we have the chromosomes. In fact, uh, one of the functions of uh, the nucleus, as learned earlier in the topic of the cell, is that uh, uh, the nucleus contains genetic material. And this genetic material is contained within the chromosomes. The genetic material is contained within the chromosomes. And we know that that genetic material is the one that determines the characteristics that we have and the characteristics of our generations to come. Now, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, we can say that uh, a chromosome is a thread-like. It looks like a thread. Huh? It's, an, it's a long thing. It's a thread-like structure uh, located within the nucleus of a cell. So we have thread-like structures, those are the chromosomes, but when it is one, we refer to it as a chromosome. Uh, this chromosome is the one that contains genetic material, and this genetic material is in form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. We shall see that in more details. So uh, we are saying that uh, uh, located within the nucleus of a cell, uh, the chromosome contains genetic material contains genetic material in form of a chemical substance called deoxy deoxyribonucleic acid in form of a chemical that we are referring to as deoxyribonucleic acid abbreviated as DNA in capital letters. So that chemical substance is the genetic material and this genetic material now uh, which is the DNA, is the one that contains the genes. Uh, DNA contains the genes that determine genes that determine the characteristics of the cell and its progeny uh, and its offspring and its generations. So that DNA contains the genes and those genes determine the characteristics of the cell. The, characteristic, the characteristics of every cell in our bodies determine the characteristics that we have overall. Now, <clears throat> Now we are going to look at uh, the structure of a chromosome and how it looks like. And uh, a chromosome is made up of two parallel strands. We have that and another strand. 
So a chromosome is made of two parallel strands, and those strands we refer to them as chromatids. So we have this chromatid and we have uh, this chromatid. We have a chromatid and another chromatid, and those chromatids are joined at, uh, at the centromere, at the center in a place that we are calling the centromere. So this is a, a chromatid, this is another chromatid, so we refer to them as being sister chromatids because they make a chromosome. So that is the structure of a chromosome. And then those uh, uh, chromatids or those uh, sister chromatids, they are joined together at the centromere. At the centromere. <coughs> so that uh, we are saying that a chromosome is made of two parallel strands called chromatids. We have the chromatids, two parallel strands called chromatids joined together at the centromere. So those uh, chromatids are joined together at the centromere to form a chromosome. Now, then we are saying that uh, this chromosome contains the, the genes and uh, genes are located at positions within the chromosome that we refer to as the gene locus or the gene loci when there are many. So we can say uh, that uh, genes are located within a chromosome at particular points called gene loci or locus is the singular. If it is just one, it's the gene locus. But if there are many points within a chromosome where a gene or where genes are located, then we refer to them as being gene loci. As we can illustrate here. So for example, if you have a chromosome here that is made of two chromatids, so we may have a particular position here having gene A in different combinations, a capital letter or small letter. So if, for example, gene A is for tallness, maybe A capital is tall and A small is short, but both are expressing the same thing. So the same trait, which is tallness. I can, I can have another chromosome having two chromatids two parallel strands like we have seen there, although here they are not joined at the centrum here, yeah? we have just uh, separated them. Then we may have another gene locus where we have gene B. I don't know if it will fit, you can make it slightly bigger. another chromosome, so we have gene B at that position and small b at that position. So, so these are chromosomes, this is, uh, these are chromosomes showing gene loci. So there is the gene locus for A, and there is the gene locus for B, the position within the chromosome where gene A is located and where gene B is located. 
so chromosomes showing gene loci because there are more than one locus uh, gene loci for gene a and b of course in different combinations a capital a small b capital b small <clears throat> so that is basically uh, about the chromosome so we have identified the position of the chromosome where the genes are located. Now, the other thing that uh, is good to mention is that uh, uh, chromosomes may either exist singly or in pairs. Chromosomes may either exist singly or in pairs. So in case uh, a cell has chromosomes that exist in pairs, then we say that uh, that cell is in a diploid state. Mm? Chromosomes are in pairs. Uh, they are in groups of two. Two, 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 two. So we say that uh, a cell containing chromosomes occurring in pairs is said to be a diploid or in a diploid state and we indicate that with 2n to show that those chromosomes are in pairs the two represents the the pair <coughs> so eg somatic cells or somatic or body cells are a diploid. Diploid to mean that their chromosomes are in pairs. So they have their chromosomes not existing as just a single chromosome, but this one and another one. This one and its corresponding member of the pair. They are said to be diploid. And these chromosome pairs, these chromosome pairs are referred to as homologous chromosomes. They are referred to as homologous chromosomes, the chromosome pairs. So whereby a cell has chromosomes existing in pairs, that state we call it diploid. So we say that that cell is diploid. But the chromosomes themselves that exist in pairs, we refer to them as being homologous chromosomes. And we can say that homologous chromosomes are identical in appearance. They look, for example, if this is one of the members of the pair, the other one will be identical to this. But they do not carry the same genetic material. Identical in appearance, structure, but do not carry the same genetic material. So if one member of the pair may be carrying the gene for tallness as tall, the other one can carry the same trait but carry short. So they do not necessarily have to both carry tall, tall. One can carry the gene for tallness, the other one can carry the gene for, for shortness. So we are saying that homologous chromosomes, though identical in appearance, do not carry the same genetic material. Now, we also have cells that contain chromosomes that do not occur in pairs but exist singly just like we have seen in this case single 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 chromosomes we refer to that state as being a haploid state haploid from the word half it's a half of the diploid state is a half of the diploid state so we can say that uh, uh, chromosomes Just mention a bit, change a bit. 
uh, we can say that cells whose chromosomes occur singly are referred to as being haploid. So we denote that with, a, with an N. The other one is 2N, this one is N. We refer to it as being haploid. E.g. gametes. So gametes are haploid. They have half the number of chromosomes. E.g. in humans, somatic cells, that is body cells, have 23 pairs of chromosomes while gametes have 23 chromosomes. So there's a difference between having 23 pairs and having 23 chromosomes. So the somatic cells that we have said that they are diploid, they have 23 pairs. So that means 46 chromosomes. Uh, gametes have 23 chromosomes. So we are saying that gametes are haploid. They have a half of 46. They have a half of what is in the somatic cells. And that is because one day they will undergo fertilization, whereby they will now combine to regain the 46 that is uh, required in a somatic cell. So the assignment, what is a, a homologous chromosome, B, gene locus, and C, DNA. Uh, and on DNA, don't just say that uh, the abbreviations for DNA means this and this and that, but just go ahead and tell us what is uh, the DNA uh, made of, or what does it contain? Uh, explain the terms diploid and the term haploid. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.